Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to a private campsite just north of Grand Lake and west of Rocky Mountain National Park in north central Colorado. The valley floor is over 8,000 feet in elevation, but the gorgeous granite peaks around it tower to over 11,000 feet high. Not only the mountains are tall here, as the forests of lodgepole pine, Douglas fir, and bristlecone pine reveal their majesty. The oldest living tree in the world is 4,800 years old and is of the bristlecone pine species. The animals that frequent this area are moose, mule deer, elk, and bighorn sheep. The dominant predator of the area is the black bear. It is in this scenic and rugged backdrop that our episode takes place today. On Sunday, July 25, 1971, 31-year-old John Richardson of Denver, Colorado was camping with his fiancée, Linda Moore, and his brother-in-law, G. H. Waddell, at Holsworth Ranch. Moore and Richardson were set to tie the knot on the coming Saturday, looking forward to making a life together as husband and wife. Moore had recently received her doctorate degree from UCLA earlier this year at only 27 years of age. Mr. Waddell with his wife and three kids were staying in their RV and Richardson and Moore were camping in their own separate tents alongside their family. The scenery and company were an amazing background for the engaged couple to bid their last week as singles farewell and enjoy some time in the woods together. After dinner time and fun moments around the campfire, the campers began to wind down for the night. The Waddells began the nightly ritual of getting the kids into bed as Richardson and Moore crawled into their sleeping bags for a peaceful night's rest beneath the soothing blanket of stars laid out above them. Unbeknownst to the campers, a hungry black bear was lurking in the darkness. The aroma of their meal still hung in the air, wafting its way into its nostrils, beckoning it forward to what might be an easy meal. In the 1970s, it wasn't uncommon for visitors to forests to feed bears as they were found in parks or near campgrounds. This behavior conditioned bears to identify people as a food source, indirectly, but not always indirectly. The bear stealthily crept through the night, padding up to near Richardson's tent. For some reason, it was drawn to his tent, and there is no source that indicated whether he had food inside his tent or not, but he was nonetheless seen as a food source. Sources indicate that Richardson may have heard the bear nearby and emerged from his tent to investigate, but since he was alone at the time, there is no way to confirm this. At any rate, once he exited his tent, the bear attacked him. It bit him by the neck and shook its head back and forth, taking them to the ground in the process. Richardson fought back as best he could and yelled in terror for help as the bear was unrelenting in its attack on him. Moore heard his cries for help and was first to respond to them. She rushed out of her tent and yelled at the bear, trying to frighten it off. While she tried to rescue her beloved fiancé, the bear chased her and bit her on the back, leaving Richardson bleeding on the ground. At this point, Mr. Waddell roared from the RV, brandishing a frying pan, as if it were a broadsword. Waddell struck the bear about the face numerous times with such ferocity that the bear turned and fled into the forest. It was then that Waddell and Moore turned their attention to Richardson. The bear had severely lacerated his throat, from which his blood gushed quickly. His life ebbed as they tried life-saving first aid. The authorities were quickly notified and a search for the bear was underway. A professional hunter was brought in and tracked the bear using hounds. They relentlessly followed the bear as it covered several miles trying to elude its pursuers. After catching up with the black bear, they dispatched it and ended its predatory death campaign. Upon examining the bear, it was found to be of average size and health for bears in the area, weighing in at a healthy 200 to 230 pounds. There's no mention of the sex or age of the bear, nor if there were cubs present. Frequently, these kinds of attacks are from younger male bears who are just learning the boundaries between their world and the human world. Black bear attacks in Colorado have occurred on rare occasion, but the attack on Richardson was the first fatal bear attack in recent history, but it wouldn't be the last. We've discussed bear attacks in Colorado on this channel before, but they frequently happened after a human was providing food to the bear, as in the Donna Munson episode. That episode is interesting and worth a look if you have time. But in the episode on the young lumberjack Colin McClellan, in this episode, there's a component of predation and perhaps territorial defense. After reviewing the facts surrounding this attack, I'm left with a few questions. Do you think the attack on Richardson was a predatory attack or a defensive attack? The defensive attack possibility has validity in that once he emerged from his tent, he may have surprised the bear. 
Do you think the bear may have been habituated to find food at campsites? Do you think a frying pan is a better bear deterrent than bear spray? Would you have the courage of Moore and Waddell to physically confront a bear while it was attacking one of your loved ones? I look forward to reading your thoughts, so please post them in the comment section below and let's talk about it. My parting comment is that I've skinned brown bears in Alaska, and once their hide is removed, it is apparent that their design hinges around two deadly actions. A bear's head is a big ball of muscle, and it looks like every one of those muscles ties into their jaws. As for their forearms, they are massive, with dense bone and muscle forming something similar to a mace from medieval days, crowned with five sharp claws. I still have three brown bear claws that I sometimes take out and press against my skin to remind myself how easily they pierce frail human flesh, and that is with the controlled pressure of a man. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.